Hi, this is Pam from Total Pamarchy, and today I'm going to show you how to make this fall inspired Vault 111 knit cowl. I'm going to show you the process from the beginning to the end. I'm going to show you how to cast on, cast off, knit, purl, and everything in between so you can make this scarf or cowl or one just like it. Subscribe to my channel for more crafty geekery and give this video a thumbs up. You'd really make my day. The first step in knitting is casting on. You do this by creating a slip knot. I do this by wrapping the yarn around my fingers, going under and over with the needle, and then pulling it off. There are other ways to do this, just this is just the method that I use. And then we're going to cast on 25 stitches. So you're going to insert the needle into the front of that loop. Wrap the yarn around the back side, hook it, pull it through, and loop that loop over top of the needle. And you're going to do that again from the front to the back. Loop the yarn around, pull it through, and put it over the needle. Going from front to back, looping around pulling out and going over the top of the needle. And you're going to do this 25 times until you've cast on 25 stitches. And you can count the stitches as you go along to make sure that you have the proper amount of stitches. Now we're going to learn the knit stitch. We're going to knit 25 stitches across the first row and we're going to knit 20 rows of garter stitch. Garter stitch is when you knit every row of your work. So much like we did before when we were casting on, you're going to insert your needle into the front of the stitch, wrap around, pull that yarn through, but instead of putting the loop over top of the needle, you're just going to pull the stitch off of the left needle as you do so. So you're going to pull it through, and then you're going to pull that stitch off. So you're going to put in at the front, wrap around, and pull that stitch off. In, around, pull it through, and off. In, around, pull it through, and off. And you're going to do that until you reach the end of the row. When you reach the end of the row, you can count all your stitches to make sure that you still have 25 stitches on your needle and you haven't forgotten to pull a stitch off and you've accidentally added another stitch, creating more stitches than you need. So if you have the proper amount of stitches, then you can keep going to the front to the back with your needle front to back, wrap around and pull that stitch off. Front to back, wrap around, and pull that stitch off. Front to back, and keep going.
Once you've finished your 20 rows of garter stitch, we're gonna add a new color and learn a new stitch. We're gonna learn stocking stitch. So to add a new color, we're gonna take the yellow and we're gonna start knitting. We're gonna insert the needle in just like we were doing before for the garter stitch. We're gonna wrap the yarn around I do this by creating a little bit of a loop just to make it a bit easier. Sometimes it's finicky. Employ your other fingers to hold the yarn. And then you just pull the yarn through much like you were doing before with the knit stitch. You wrap the yarn around again and pull it through. So from the front to the back, wrap around and pull through. And continue knitting this whole row just like you had done with the blue for the garter stitch. So after you finish that first knit row of stocking stitch, we're just gonna trim the yarn here so it doesn't get in our way. Cut the blue. And then we're just going to tie the yellow and the blue together. I do this in order so that they don't kind of slip away. Next step for stocking stitch is to learn how to purl. So you knit one row and purl the next. Instead of inserting the needle into the left side of that first stitch of that front stitch, you're gonna come from the right and have your needle behind the other one, so closer to you. So you put it through, wrap around, and pull it off. Similar to the way that you did with knitting, except it's just on the back side. So you kind of, from the right to the left, wrap it around and pull it off, and you're gonna do that for the rest of the row. The next row in stocking at stitch is knitting again. So you knit one row, you purl one row, you knit one row, and you purl one row. So you're gonna go from the front to the back on the left side of that stitch and through. Wrap the yarn around and pull it through. So we're knitting again. You're gonna do that until you reach the end of the row. Once you've reached the end of the row for knitting, you're gonna turn your work around. And then we're gonna purl the next row. So from the right to the left into that front of the stitch, wrapping your yarn around, pulling it through, and then pulling that stitch off the left-hand needle. So in, around, and off. In, around, and off. And you're gonna do that until you reach the end of the row again. So once you reach the end of the row for purling, so you've knit one row, purl one row, knit one row, purl one row, you're gonna knit one more row, and then we're gonna add a new color, the blue again, by purling. So we're gonna add our next color by purling and joining the blue, just like we joined the yellow with our knit stitch. I'm just gonna wrap the blue around and pull it off as a new stitch. So from going into the front of that stitch from the right to the left. You're gonna purl, wrap it around, 
and pull it off and then you've joined another color. So here we're just tying those ends together. Again, I just like doing this so that I know it's not gonna come apart on me. And then we're gonna continue our stockingette stitch. So we purled the last one, we're gonna knit this row. So once you've finished, five rows and stocking at stitch with the blue. We're going to join the yellow again to add another stripe. And we're going to do this from the knit side. If you try to do this from the opposite side, like the purl side, it won't look right. Once you finish five more rows of the yellow, knitting and purling opposite rows, we're going to join the blue again as a purl row, knitting the second row of the blue. And this is what your piece should look like, the right side and the wrong side. Now that we've finished all of our stripes in stocking at stitch, we're going to join the blue, so we're just cutting the rest of that yellow off. And the rest of the scarf will be knit in garter stitch, so knitting every row, except for this first one where we're going to join the blue. We have to join the blue in purl stitch or else the front of your work will have those two-tone colors around the stripes and it just won't look right. It won't look as clean on the front. So you want to purl this row first and then you'll be able to knit the rest of the rows. So we're just purling all the way across here. Again, coming into the front of that stitch from the right to the left. And I'm just showing you what it looks like. That's how it should look like on the front if you've purled it looks good and then we can continue the rest of the row when we reach the end of the row we're going to turn our work around here to the right side so that's the front the right side of the work just tying off those strings again just something that I do, you don't necessarily have to. And then we're gonna begin the rest of the cowl by knitting every row. Once you've completed a couple of rows in garter stitch, this is what it should look like. Garter on the bottom, that's stocking at stitch in the middle, so you can see the difference. And that's garter stitch again that we're going into and it looks like ripply and bumpy on the top of it. The scarf is going to be about 67 inches long, so you'll need about three balls of the blue yarn. And here I'm just showing again how to join that yarn so when you end up at the end of a blue ball and need to add a new one, that's how you would join the next ball of yarn. So 
once your scarf has the length that you want, mine ended up being about 67 inches long, we need to cast off. So that means we're gonna take all these stitches off the needle. In order to do that, you start by knitting, just like you're going to knit. So you're gonna knit two stitches. And then what you're gonna do is take that first stitch, stick your needle in, behind grab it and you're gonna pull it over the second one and off and then you're gonna knit another stitch so that you have two and once you have two on that right hand needle you're gonna pull that first one over and off so you're gonna knit on another stitch so that you have two on the right hand needle you're gonna insert the needle in pull it over and off and you're gonna do this until you reach the end of the row. Always having two stitches on and pulling the one from behind over the one in front. And you are almost done. You have one stitch left that we just need to tie off. So basically you're just going to cut the yarn. And then you're gonna take that loop and you're just gonna pull the yarn through it. And that's it. Next I'll show you how to darn in all your ends. To darn in your ends, you'll need a darning needle. It has a big eye in it and it's blunt on the end. So you wanna thread your yarn into the darning needle. Don't worry if you struggle with this, you can always smush the ends together or lick them or something in order to get it through that hole. And then all you're going to do is basically take that thread and you kinda of, kinda of sew it into the end of the piece. So just find some of the knit stitches and you're going to weave it in and out until you feel it's fairly solid and that it's not going to come out of the piece. So I'm just picking some stitches here. I'm sure there's better ways of doing this. This is just kind of how I do it every time. So just threading that yarn all the way through until it's tucked away. And then when you're happy with it, you're gonna cut off the end. So you're gonna darn in the side pieces in much the same way. I know I've already tied a little kind of knot there. I always tie them again. I don't know, I think I'm paranoid about them coming apart. So then you're gonna take one of those side pieces and you're gonna use your darning needle just to weave those ends into the piece a little bit. So find some loops and kind of weave them along. Make sure that you leave enough of the yarn as you go along too when you're trimming it so you have enough to do this. So when you're darning in the ends on a different color, don't put the yellow on the blue. Put the yellow to the yellow and blue to blue. So I'm just showing you here to stick to the same color. Otherwise, um, sometimes if you put the yellow with the blue that you'll end up seeing the yellow through the blue and you don't necessarily want to do that. 
So this way it's hidden a little bit more in the scarf or cowl that you're making. So the final step is if you're making a cowl so your ends are joined, you're gonna sew the ends together. So I basically fold it in half with the wrong side on the outside and you put a, a good length of the yarn on your needle and you just start stitching the two pieces together. Try to grab the stitches from the end of your piece and sew them together. If you wanna leave this as a scarf, you can. So if you don't wanna join it together, that's perfectly acceptable to do as well. And then you'll just have a really long scarf. So you're just about finished here. Once you finish sewing the end together, you're gonna wanna tie off that last piece. So just make sure it's knotted really well. And then you're gonna cut that last thread off that you use to sew the whole end piece of the cowl together. And then after that, you're gonna darn in those last two ends that you, from the yarn you used to sew it together. Like I said, you can leave it as a scarf if you want, or you can make a cowl. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun making it. I'll have links down before, below for material, and I'll also have written instructions down below as well. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.